right here, this is the olfactory bulb. It's been partially removed here. And then the olfactory tract. That's cranial nerve number one. Cranial number two, cranial nerve number two is right here. You've got the optic nerve that would go and attach to an eye, and then another optic nerve here to an eye. Where they cross is the optic chiasm, and this is the optic tract. So, cranial nerve number one, cranial nerve number two. Cranial nerve number three is right here. This is the oculomotor nerve. It comes off of the midbrain. This part of the midbrain is called the cerebral peduncle. Oculomotor uh, nerve number three or cranial nerve number three uh, controls the ciliary muscle and um, a bunch of eye muscles. Okay, so then we'll start at the top again. Olfactory bulb and tract. Optic nerve, optic chiasm, optic tract. Right here is called the mammillary body. Sometimes it's even considered like an extension of the hypothalamus, so it's part of the diencephalon. This hole right here is where the infundibulum would hang if the animal were alive, and then a ball-shaped gland called the pituitary gland would hang off the bottom of the brain here. When the brain's pulled out of the brain case, that pops off. So mammillary body. Then we're done with the diencephalon. We're ready for the midbrain. The midbrain can, has a bulges on the front that are called the cerebral peduncles here and here. It also has bulges on the back that you can see. Here and here. So we call that the corpora quadrigemina. So you've got like basically the four twins. This is also called the superior and inferior colliculi. Okay, so I'm going to start over again. You have the olfactory bulb and tract. Optic nerve, optic chiasm, optic tract. Mammillary body, this is where the infundibulum and pituitary gland would hang from. Cerebral peduncle, cerebral peduncle, oculomotor nerve cranial nerve number three. Then you get to the pons and the medulla oblongata. Ta-da! Those are the main structures you need to know on the inferior side of the brain. Then, on this part, all you need to know is every time there is um, a bulge on the brain, it's called a gyrus, and every time there's a valley, it's called a sulcus. This is a cerebellum. Now let's take a look at the sagittal view. So for the sagittal view, I like to start with a landmark. I think the easiest landmark to find right here is the thalamus, this ball-shaped structure right here. So if this is the thalamus, underneath it would be the hypothalamus. So this more gray matter type tissue right here is the hypothalamus. Then if I keep going down, I see a very big piece of thick white matter. That's part of the optic chiasm. Right here is part of the mammillary body. So again, going back to the thalamus, if I go upon the thalamus, then I get to the epithalamus or the pineal gland, the, the gland that makes melatonin. So then another nice landmark is this white matter right here called the corpus callosum. Connects the right and left cerebral hemispheres. This white matter right here is the fornix, and it helps to connect some of the elements of the limbic system. This opening in here is one of the lateral ventricles, one on both sides of the brain. Cerebral spinal fluid comes from the lateral ventricles. It flows on a, a very thin layer through the diencephalon. Then it goes down the cerebral aqueduct and into the fourth ventricle behind the cerebellum. On the cerebellum, you have gray matter and white matter. The white matter kind of looks like tree branches, so it's called arbor vitae, tree of life. Then we are to the midbrain right here. We already looked at the cerebral peduncle on the front, and we already looked at the corporate quadrigemina on the back. Then you have the pons, the medulla oblongata, and then the spinal cord.